Shark Tank can produce a lot of losers, but also quite a few winners. We are here looking at some of the most successful businesses to have appeared on Shark Tank. Right before getting into the video, if you would like to be entered into our monthly shout out contest where we read off some comments at the end of the month, please let us know down below in the comments your thoughts on this video after it is finished. Also leave a like on this video. Wicked Good Cupcakes. In a season 4 episode, Tracy Noonan and Daniel Village, a mother and daughter duo, came to the Sharks with their cupcakes that are made in a jar. They struck a deal with Kevin, where he invested $75,000 for royalties instead of equity. He received $1 from every cupcake sold until he made his money back. After that, he now receives 50 cents per cupcake sold. Kevin said it's been his most profitable investment of the show since the first appearance of Wicked Good Cupcakes. Sales jumped from $7,000 a month to now approximately $400,000 a month or $4.8 million annually. Bottle Breacher this product is quite inventive to a certain extent as it reuses 50 caliber bullets into stylized bottle openers. The heads of the company are former Navy SEAL Eli Crane and his wife and business partner Jen. The duo struck a deal with a duo of sharks, Mark and Kevin, where they together invested $150,000 in exchange for 20% in Bottle Breacher. Kevin has taken the role of lead ambassador of the company and has said that it is one of his most profitable investments. As demand has increased, resulting in more than $2.5 million made only partway through 2017. Simple Sugars. In a season 4 episode, Lanny Lazari was only 18 years old, but she brought to the Sharks her skincare company called Simple Sugars. This cosmetics company interested Mark quite a lot. He ended up making a deal for $100,000 investment in return for 33% equity. With one of the fastest success stories, her sales jumped from $50,000 to $220,000 within 24 hours of the episode airing. Just six weeks later, she hit $1 million. In 2016, the company brought in more than $3 million in revenue. Simple Sugar's products can be found in more than 700 retail locations and they do ship internationally. Mark Cuban has gone on record saying that it's one of his most profitable investments from the show. Bombas. Damon invested into this company. In 2017, it made $50 million. Derived from the Latin word for bumblebee, bees live in a hive and work together to make their world a better place. They're small, but their combined actions have a big impact on the world. We like that. That's why our mantra is be better. We knit it on the inside of every pair of Bombas as a reminder that you've helped someone in need with your purchase. And a reminder that little improvements can add to make a big difference. We set out to rethink a product that was an afterthought in the marketplace. Two years of research and development led to seven material improvements to the design, performance, and comfort of the everyday sock. And we continue to innovate with each successive production run. To date, they have donated over 7 million pairs of socks. Breathometer People love to temporarily escape from the stresses of life when they have the chance to. A main method of doing so is by drinking alcohol. A potential problem for those who go out to drink, whether it be to a bar or a restaurant, is that they may end their night in a state that is not safe to be driving in. In Season 5, Charles Yim struck a 5 shark deal for his product, the Breathometer, a portable breathalyzer that works with a smartphone. The deal, as I said, was between all 5 sharks. Mark, Kevin, Damon, Robert, and Lori, where they all equally contributed for a total of $650,000 in exchange for 30% of the company split between them. Charles Yim, after a Shark Tank appearance, secured another $6.5 million in additional funding from another party, and he also partnered with Cleveland Clinic to develop a more accurate and portable breathalyzer plus device that tracks oral health and hydration levels. In 2015 alone, the company made about $20 million in sales. A problem that arose, though, is that at the beginning of 2017, the FTC forced the company to refund all purchases of the breathometer. As it turns out, they are way too inaccurate and are inconsistent to be providing the service they claim to. Since this major speed bump, the company has shifted its focus to the oral health product, although the owner is still doing all right himself. Tipsy Elves. These guys came away from the show with $100,000 invested by Robert. In the year 2013 alone, they brought in a total of $50 million in sales. 
They say, at Tipsy Elves, our mission is simple. We want to make the most outrageous clothes known to mankind in order to make your life more fun. Sounds like a big undertaking, but we've been doing it one legendary collection at a time. Along the way, we've reinvented ugly Christmas sweaters, launched a patriotic collection that Honest Abe would honestly love, and engineered ski suits so bright the sun wouldn't stare directly at them. We know what you're thinking. Sign me up. Well, not so fast, buckaroo. The thing is, we're not out for everyone. If you relish in the monotony of the 9 to 5, enjoying the occasional water cooler chit chat, and overposting your life milestones on Facebook, no one cares you bought a third cat, Jeff, then we're not for you. Tipsy Elves is here to outfit you for whatever gathering or occasion life may throw your way. Need to show your neighbors what a true patriot looks like on Independence Day? That's what our Americana collection is for. Looking to score some digits at the annual holiday bell? We've got an ugly Christmas sweater for that. Want to teach the snow a lesson on what snow blindness feels like? Check out our eye-melting collection of neon ski suits. You see, friend, we've got a lot of life to live, and your clothing has your back. You just keep making every day a glory day, and we'll do the rest. Alright. Fun fact, at the 2018 Winter Olympics, Jamaica's bobsled team was wearing Tipsy Elves warm-up suits. Bubba Q's Boneless Ribs Al Bubba Baker, who won the 1978 NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year award, broke into a near career path after appearing in a Season 5 episode with Bubba Q's Boneless Ribs, a unique take on ribs, plus the other major selling point being that it can be cooked in the microwave for two minutes and then they will be ready to eat. Bubba struck a deal with Damon for $300,000 in exchange for 30% equity and licensing rights to his company. Damon helped by securing a deal with a large-scale food processing plant and said that he thinks he can get Bubba Q's to become a national brand with $200 million in lifetime sales. They are still doing well and are likely to surpass Scrub Daddy as the most successful Shark Tank product sometime in the near future. Read Rest. Lori invested into this company. The company has made more than $8 million since appearing on the show. After turning 40, founder Rick Hopper began wearing glasses and habitually dropping and losing them. This sparked the idea in 2010 to create a solution to the everyday problem for millions of people who wear glasses. In 2012, Reed Rest landed a deal with Lori on ABC Shark Tank, in Season 3, Episode 6, forever changing the company's future. Today, Reed Rest has become a multi-functional product used for not only holding glasses, but ID badges and earbud wires as well. If you ever have crossed paths with Rick, you may know how much fun he has and how much he loves to share it with everyone around him. He is a one-of-a-kind entrepreneur, inventor, motivator, husband, father, and friend. Scrub Daddy Starting with the most successful product to come from Shark Tank, this is a cleaning sponge that is designed in the shape of a smiley face. It is certainly one of the more basic products to ever come to the show, but that certainly doesn't mean it's bad. From 2014 to 2017, the Scrub Daddy brought in a total of $75 million in revenue, as said by Lori, the shark that agreed to work with founder and CEO of Scrub Daddy, Aaron Cross. The deal took place in Season 4. Lori invested $200,000 in exchange for 20% equity. With all of this said, the product was not a big success immediately, even after the episode featuring the Scrub Daddy aired. For the first 18 months following success, sales were not that great, and Aaron was at times doubtful. But Lori kept spirits high with her optimism. With her connections, she would eventually bring the Scrub Daddy onto QVC, a famous shopping channel. Alongside bringing it to stores like Bed Bath & Beyond, the product has become a bestseller, and with the expanded line of products, everything for the company has been continuing to trend in a great direction, and the founder is doing very well for himself. Groove Book This husband and wife team, Brian and Julie Whitman, came to the Sharks in a Season 3 episode with their product, Groove Book, a digital photo subscription service. For the price of $2.99 a month, the user gets a bound book of high-resolution photos they took with their smartphone. Despite technology moving fast, I always think that a physical photo book will be something of importance and relevance. Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary agreed to the idea, as together they've invested $150,000 for 80% of the licensing profit 
profits. With O'Leary taking the lead advisory role, Groovebook as of today is doing quite well in sales, starting with the great popularity after airing on the episode with 50,000 subscribers rapidly achieved. The heads of the company eventually sold Grooveshock to Shutterstock for $14.5 million, so they are certainly doing very well nowadays for themselves. Thank you all for watching, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, goodbye.